things, but I'll just go through quickly. So PDCs are, are uh, really becoming increasingly studied because they're a major source of interferon alpha. Um, SLE patients have high interferon alpha in the blood, but lower numbers of PDC, PDCs. Um, so sort of like what Dr. Maps was just saying, that the PDCs are, are low in number in the blood, but the, the idea is that maybe, maybe it's because the, um, they're recruited to, into the lymphoid tissue and, and activated, activated there. And so this is, show, this is a, good little, a good little diagram that I found that's uh, in, in our class, and Kyle, Kyle and I are in class now, and what we just studied was endocytosis, and so here is, uh, so this will make sense to, to Kyle. So this, this is the, um, the nucleic acid that's being recognized by a PDC. It's endocytosed into the early endosome, and then um, the, these, these toll-like receptors that are actually embedded within the, the endosome and lysosome membrane are, are what become activated and, and set off a signaling cascade to, to either produce interferon alpha or um, result in, in dendritic cell maturation and, and an adaptive, adaptive response. So, this is the um, so yeah, in, in steady state conditions, the, the PDCs are in lymphoid organs and blood, and the proliferation rates are very low. Pathological conditions. There's the production of type 1 interferon and activation of B, B and T cells and natural killer cells. Um, really, mainly mainly mediated by the, the recognition by the receptors of TLR9 and 7. Seems like a lot of the research out there on PDCs is geared toward viral viral infections. So yeah. And this doesn't have a whole lot to do with, with what I'm with what I'm talking about, but I just think it's interesting. We went to a talk um, a few a few days ago. I don't think it was this week. It was last week about these neutro what are they called neutrophil extracellular trap structures. And so this is an image of a of a of a net. They've called it a net, and it looks like a net. I think that's a, it's a neutrophil that's made this sort of net to engulf uh, bacteria, and so. These uh, circulating immune complexes comprised of, of DNA, autoantibodies to DNA, uh, or these, these net structures can trigger the activation of, of PDCs as seen in SLE patients. So I just thought that was a, a, good, a good image. Um, so what we, what we wanted to, to do, um, so we found, we found, we looked at papers that, that uh, have that looked at peripheral dendritic uh, PDCs in humans, and and I looked at what what markers they typically use to to identify PDCs in humans, and these are the these are the markers that came up in, in just about every paper that I've found. Uh, CD123 was a real common one. CD33, CD303, and HLA. So what makes it hard is they they all have they all go by about three or four different names, and so it's sort of hard to to make make a sense of it because they have they have their different different names. And um, so the CD one twenty three is the ILR IL three receptor. Um, so the paper the paper that I found that, that we decided to model. Uh, our experiment after. So this is this is the gating uh, pattern that these people use to identify PDCs. And they so here's the SSC, FSC, and they use the HLADR and C D thirty three here. And then so it's a little bit confusing to figure out exactly what they did, how they got to that point, and I'm still not quite sure. I'm having a little bit of trouble with making sense of that. But they, they, they further they further look at 
the CD-123 expression to, to identify the, the PDCs here. And so we, we wanted to, to see if we could recreate this in mice uh, and see if, if these markers could be used to identify PDCs in mice. Uh, they also looked at the interferon alpha is increased in, in active SLE PDCs um, and I-cross ligand was increased in I inactive SLE PDCs, and so we wanted to, to look at that, look at that too. But so most from um, just calcium donors or from um, these which Which one? The gaining, the, the whole gaining strategy. Do they get from those glucose patients or from calcium donors? Um, um, uh, these are from... Uh, it's sure. active and inactive. They're human. Well, these... Yeah, I know for human, but just wanting to... I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I can't remember off the top of my head. I've got the paper right there. If, if you want to look at it, yeah. I'm curious. Uh, HLA, look at the expression of their positive for HLA. I'm just wondering, it seems like uh, in, in my if you look at MSC expression, it's a um, positive support that should be MSC to a negative because they are good, not good uh, in your presenting cells. Once they get mature, they, 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 it's kind of high level. Another, as I was trying to, Chi Wu helped help me run facts yesterday. We, we ordered the antibodies and we ran facts, and and uh, this this is not our results, but this I had I had trouble gating um, because the the plots just didn't look the same as they looked in that paper, and and cells just weren't there where, where I expected them to be. So I found this other paper that that again just confirms that this. This is in, in rhesus monkeys, but you know they, they're using the CD123 and the HLA-DR um, to and, and identifying PDCs as as double double positives here. So um, it may just be that the markers don't don't work so good in mice. I'm, I'm not sure. Well, <coughs> mature PDCs are class two positive. Okay, so it may be maybe that's what they're looking at. Determine if these markers and gating patterns used, used in, in the that main, mainly in that human study that, that Hallie's looking at to see if they could be applied to, to the autoimmune mice, um, and so we, we want to evaluate the numbers of PDCs and M MBCs, MB6 versus BXB2, and uh, hopefully be able to, to relate this to, to human SLE blood cells. So this was this is a, just some just a quick gating that, that I did from from yesterday's results. So it's uh, CD123 versus the IAD, and according to that first paper, the, <laughs> this gating is, is probably all wrong. But the you know the, the double positives would be right right in here, and it just doesn't seem to be a real real clear population. You see that get absent in the BSE2 because in the BSE2 they majority uh, become mature, so they, they don't they have high level of uh, um, MSC expansion. You know there is a little population on the spleen B6. Anyway, you, you know that little shadow, that double green shadow, uh, kind of close in those CD123. There's like a little you know like there's a I don't know why it's like that, but the 123 yeah. There's a clear line on the other, on the, on the B6, BD2 blood, but when the spleen is not a clear line, but you know, I don't know, maybe that means those cells aren't there in the, in the blood. It just looks like the whole thing is, the hyperpopulation shifted over in the spleen. Mm -hmm.
And maybe the 123, which is. How do you gas cells? How did you gather cells from Spain? Well, the one, one, two, three is IL three recept. No, IL which receptor? IL three receptor. Does it recognize IL three receptor in mouse? I mean, then maybe the antibody just doesn't work. Well, the company said it cross reacts with mice. Right, but you know, we need it. We need like a mast cell or whatever it is, some cell line that has a lot of. We need a positive.